Are you ready to step into the world of high-end motion graphics and build visuals like you never have before? Well, this is how to unleash the raw power of After Effects and create cinematic 3D scenes without limits. Let's get started. All right, we got a lot of big brain plays going on here for this composition, but I promise this stuff is so easy. So let's start with our easy roadmap by first importing a master 3D model into your composition. You can get pretty much whatever you may need when you search for free 3D models, and specifically you can import .obj's, GLB's, and GLTF's right into After Effects. And additionally, you can just get our free project in the description below so you can follow along. With your master model, you can size it however you need, but this should be in the absolute 3D center of your composition just by default. And with this model, we now have a point of reference to build out the rest of our scene. Uh, because the next play in our roadmap is to set up a floor by creating a dark gray solid and then just make it 3D. From here, you can set its X rotation to 90 degrees and then position it right under your master object then just scale it up like it's nobody's business additionally i would create another solid uh, that will just be used for your background beautiful now that we're all set up the third step is to build out the rest of the scene with more models if you have any for instance i want to add different objects like rocks and columns so let me show you how to take a singular 3D object and duplicate it randomly around a circle. So I'll go ahead and create a new composition for this and import a stone. Again, you may search for any 3D model or you can just get my project below. All right, now we could duplicate this rock like a million times and randomly move it around, but nobody got time or the patience for that, right? So we'll employ the power of ChatGPT to create us some expressions that we can use to create a ring of rocks in seconds. So I asked GPT to write me an expression to randomly offset a 3D object along a circle path in 3D space. So with this expression, we'll paste this right here into the position of our rock by all clicking the stopwatch and just paste it right there. And as we duplicate this, we'll get our randomized ring of rocks. But this is bad, let's be honest, because it's all the same variation. So the next thing I ask for is to offset the rotation and even animate the rocks to spin. So we'll paste this next expression into each rotation value. We can also change the rotation speed to variate the timing of the animation. And with some duplicates, this is all coming together. And by the way, I'll share this chat in the description below so you can copy these expressions and also see how I flirt with AI. Anyway, uh, now we just need to adjust the scale. So using the powers of our future overlord, I pasted in the expression for randomizing the scale. And then you can also adjust the minimum and maximum you want the scale to be as well. And now we can finally create 30 or so duplicates to create a randomized ring of rocks. Absolute perfection. So now let's go ahead and bring this rock composition into our main comp. And then we can click this continuously rasterize icon right here and make the layer 3D to retain its original 3D properties of your objects. All right, we got a big bulk of our scene ready to go and next we'll enhance this with our cinematic powers. And to ensure you produce cinematic work, be sure to get my free 100 templates and gain access to 45,000 plus assets, presets, and transitions right here for After Effects and Premiere Pro. You can add countless seamless transitions right into your edit and throw in highly detailed templates and create the best work in moments. So check the description below and thank you for making this channel possible. All right, we're back in this. I went ahead and made another composition of rocks and I just scaled it outward. Additionally, you can add in as many objects as you like. For instance, I added an evenly distributed expression to the position of these columns so that when you duplicate them, they'll be perfectly aligned and then added them to the master scene. So the power is yours to build out your scene however you need. Now for the fourth step, we want to create a camera for us to rotate around the scene, we need to create a null object, make it 3D, and parent the camera to the null. And now instead of using keyframes, let's alt click the stopwatch for the Y rotation and add the time asterisk 100 expression, which will rotate around the scene. Beautiful. And now we can see the rocks and everything in its full glory. Which now leads us to the fifth step, lighting. This is where we will make our career. For this specific scene, I want the light to be coming in from the top like a spotlight. So let's create a new light and set it to a, well, spotlight with shadows enabled. Now, shadows for spotlights are only available in the beta version of After Effects, which you can get from your Creative Cloud. Or if you're watching this video from the future, you should be good to go on your regular After Effects, so don't worry about that. 
All right, to angle the spotlight the easiest, create another null 3D object and parent the light to it. Then set that null's X rotation to around negative 90 degrees. Great, now let's double down on the light's intensity to bring out the highlights in our scene and then increase the shadow diffusion to soften up these shadows. And just look at that, this is just really cool. It's honestly too dark. So let's go ahead and create another light and let this be an environment light. And we'll set the intensity down to 25%. This way a big portion of our scene will still be dark while seeing those extra details. Additionally, I have this light map which can just be a simple JPEG, but preferably an HDRI. And then we can set the source of the environment light to that image. Uh, but this is all optional because this would be a very subtle touch. Okay, so this is looking good. And for the sixth step, we need to justify this light because when you add lighting without showing why the light is there, you don't really obtain that cinematic value. So let's work on the sky and we can justify this by applying a gradient ramp to the background layer. And let's just use a radial ramp and angle the white color to the top of the scene and the black color somewhere where the floor ends. And now we can also take this opportunity to use the camera tools here at the top to re-angle our camera to look upwards towards the central object and feel free to zoom in and reposition your scene with the other camera tools by using the shortcut C on your keyboard to cycle through the tools. And when it's all said and done, that low angle with a simple gradient ramp just adds so much power to the scene. But all right, awesome work for getting this far because now we're on the seventh step, which is adding our final cinematic touches to this. So go ahead and pre-compose everything and I'll just call it end game. Since we have a justified sky, let's add in some light rays by creating an adjustment layer and adding in say the CC radial fast blur effect. You can set the effect to the top of your scene and increase the amount. And finally set the blend mode of your adjustment layer to screen. You can also say use the curves effect to dial in the rays, but who needs that? This looks perfect. But you should create another adjustment layer and possibly try the noise effect with something like 6 to 12% on check color noise. And this time actually use the curves effect to dial in the color and the brightness of your scene. And there's no shame in duplicating the curves effect several times if you feel superstitious about overdoing the settings. Or maybe that's just me. Hmm. Anyway, the next cinematic effect that we need to add is depth of field. So apply the 3D channel extract effect and adjust the white and black points until what you want to be in focus is black and what you want to be out of focus is white. Then for good measure, apply the depth of field effect and slightly increase the maximum radius. And when that's all said and done, duplicate the comp and delete the effects. And then lastly, apply the camera lens blur effect and set the blur map to your bottom comp and choose effects and mask. And then feel free to dial in your blur amount and that's it. This is really awesome. But one last thing, or maybe two last things, if you wanna place 2D objects like text or graphics behind your main 3D object, it's a bit of a tricky workaround, but it's simple. Go back into your scene elements, select your main 3D object along with the camera and its null object, copy them, and now paste everything into your main comp like so. Then set the track mat of your title or graphic to the 3D object and make sure it's turned off. Boom. No problem. For the second thing, particles. You can use, say, the CC ball action effect on a white solid layer. Then just set the grid spacing to 1, the ball size to around 10, and increase the scatter like there's no tomorrow. And there you have it. A truly cinematic scene with everything you should need to know to create the best work. And you can use Motion Duck to help enhance your work in no time as well. So subscribe to be the best and always be creating.